In this video, we are going to present the velocity gradient. The velocity gradient appears frequently in continuum mechanics balance equations. Additionally, it serves a role similar to the displacement gradient for large deformations applied incrementally as a function of time. Consider a material vector dx at time t. We can assume that its image under uh, uh, the mapping induced by the deformation gradient is given by small dx at time t, which is equal to the deformation gradient f at time t multiplied by the vector d capital X. As time evolves and t becomes t plus delta t, the vector dx changes its magnitude and direction and becomes dx at time t plus delta t which is equal to the new deformation gradient f at time t plus delta t multiplied by the vector dx the difference between the two is equal to the rate of change of small of the vector dx with respect to t multiplied by delta Time. When we look at d, uh, uh, dx by dt, it's equal to f dot uh, multiplied by dx, which is df by dt. We're going to replace dx with uh, f minus 1 multiplied by dx, and f dot f minus 1 is what we call the velocity gradient and we usually denote it by l so l is equal to f dot f negative one this l relates the rate of change uh, of the vector dx with itself so d dx by dt is equal to l multiplied by dx The velocity gradient is also equal to the partial derivative of v with respect to the spatial coordinates x. In component form, L sub ij is equal to partial by vi by partial xj. The stretch tensor is defined as the symmetric component of L, while the spin tensor is defined as the skew symmetric component. D can be, used, uh, can be viewed as the instantaneous analog to the small strain matrix, while the spin tensor W can be viewed as the instantaneous analog to the infinitesimal rotation matrix that was introduced earlier. In some sense, D is considered the instantaneous rate of strain, while W is considered as the instantaneous rate of rotation. Let's investigate the behavior of L under pure rotation. Assuming the, speci the spatial position is equal to our rotation matrix Q as a function of T multiplied by X, then the deformation gradient f is equal to q uh, as a function of t. The velocity gradient, which is equal to f dot f uh, negative 1, f dot is equal to q dot, f negative 1 is equal to q transpose, that's simply because uh, the rotation matrix, its inverse is equal to its transpose. Here are the stretch and the spin tensor. The, the symmetric component and the skew symmetric component. However, the rotation matrix Q satisfies the following relationships. At any point in time, Q of course changes with time, but always Q multiplied by a transpose always equal to I. When we take the time derivative of this relationship, I dot is equal to zero, Q, Q transpose, their time derivatives are equal to Q dot Q transpose plus Q 
q dot transpose. This implies that this matrix is actually q dot q transpose is q symmetric because it is equal to inverse of its transpose. Because this matrix is skew symmetric, we'll find that the, the stretch tensor D associated with the rotation is equal to zero, while the spin tensor is equal to L itself. This implies that um, this, uh, uh, the velocity gradient is a good measure that differentiates between, uh, that, that is able to, to identify uh, rigid body rotations. The velocity gradient appears naturally in many rate equations as will be shown later. In particular, the rate of change of local volumes is related to the velocity gradient as will be shown in the next slide. First, we are going to recall two important relationships that we studied earlier, the first and third invariants of the matrix M. These can be written um, in terms of three arbitrary linearly independent vectors. The trace of M or I one of M has this form. I three of M or the third invariant of M or the determinant of M has this form. Denoting J as the determinant of F a very important relationship that is used extensively in continuum mechanics is the rate of change of the volume, namely J dot, as is equal to J multiplied by the trace of the velocity gradient, where L is equal to F dot F negative one. To show this relationship, we'll first start with the left hand side, which is J dot j dot is equal to uh, j is the determinant of f so j dot is equal to d the determinant of f but with respect to time the derivative of the determinant of f with respect to time for the determinant of f i'm going to use the form that was presented in the previous slide three linearly independent vectors a arbitrary but linearly independent the determinant of s is equal to f a dot f b cross f c divided by a dot b cross c. I will then take the derivative with respect to time. The only variable that's function of time is f. And so this becomes f dot a dot f b cross f c plus f a dot f dot b cross f c plus f a dot f b cross f dot c. I will then, every time I see f dot, I'm going to uh, introduce f negative one f. These this f negative one f is actually equal to the identity matrix, so it's really I'm not really changing anything in the formula. So I'm adding f negative one f f negative one f f negative one f, uh, f every time f dot appears. This allows me to uh, naturally find the velocity gradient because f f dot f negative one is the velocity gradient. So here you can see that the velocity gradient starts appearing. I will further, uh, instead of dividing by a dot b cross c, I will divide by f a dot f b cross f c and uh, multiply by f a dot f b cross f c. Uh, because f is, um, um, is invertible, f a dot f, uh, f a f b and f c are also linearly independent. And so, when you look at this expression, this expression actually gives me the trace of f dot f negative one. On the other side, f a dot f b cross f c divided by a dot b cross c gives me the determinant of f. And so basically, I was able to show that j dot is equal to trace l or trace f dot f negative one multiplied by j, which is the required relationship. In case of isochoric motions, 
where the volume is preserved. In that case, j dot is equal to zero. J is always equal to one, which is the ratio of the volumes or the determinant of F is always equal to one. And therefore the trace L, which is the partial derivatives of the sum of the partial derivatives of the velocity is equal to zero. And you should recall that this is the continuity equation for incompressible fluids.